Today, my class presentation is on evolution. You've probably seen clips of this idiotic video here and there as people debunk bits and pieces of it, but I'm going to go through the whole thing. It's just glaring stupidity from start to finish. We won't even get into the bad CGI, or the fact that all of the smart students have apparently left the room to have laughing fits. Well, besides the valid concept of microevolution, the concept of macroevolution is evil. Ah, it's evil. Such a nice, rational, scientific rebuttal. Not! This is complete lunacy. A scientific theory cannot be good or evil. It just describes the universe. Besides, there is no distinction whatsoever between micro and macro evolution. They are both the result of genetic changes with natural selection. Only the time frame is different, as the accumulated changes cause the descendant species to become more and more divergent. In order for there to be a distinction, you would need two sections of DNA, one frozen and impossible to change, and one where the genetic variants can work. This is just not what they see. Macroevolution is a stretch of the imagination. It requires that a species must take extra genetic information. So dinosaurs becoming birds, apes becoming humans, can't happen. Adaptation can only work for genetic information that's already there. It can't make anything new. What a load of crap. The genetic record is replete with new information being added. One popular example is nylon-eating bacteria. This information cannot have existed before because nylon didn't exist before. Gene duplication and frame drift allowed the formation of new proteins in the bacteria, enabling them to digest nylon. And yes, this was confirmed with DNA sequencing. And this is just one among hundreds, if not thousands of examples of new information entering a genome through evolution. If you believe in macroevolution, then you also believe we evolved from a rock. It's funny how you believe the most ridiculous concepts of creation just as long as you're not accountable for your actions. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing about these lying creationists. I challenge anyone to find one biologist who says we evolved from rocks. Rocks don't even have the proper organic chemicals necessary for the most basic amino acids. It's just another pathetic creationist straw man. By the way, the missing link, it's still missing. Which one is missing? Australopithecus afarensis? Australopithecus africanus? Paranthropus ethiopithecus? Homo habilis? Paranthropus boise? And any of the other dozens of transitional forms between primitive apes and humans? Or any of the other hundreds upon hundreds of transitionals between dinosaurs and birds, land mammals and whales, fish and land vertebrates, and many, many more? Dude, if we did evolve from apes, there would be an overabundance of fossilized evidence of transitional forms of species. So far, zilch. That's just pathetically wrong. But even if it weren't, even if we never found one single fossil, we would still have proof of common descent in the genetic record. From chromosomal fusion, from endogenous retroviral sequences, from genetic markers that show not only descent, but migratory patterns, and also give us the time scale in which it all happened. Listen, archaeologists have found unfossilized dinosaur bones and red blood cells from a T-Rex. These two findings alone would be a scientific impossibility if dinosaurs existed 65 million years ago. Could you please cite your source? No? I didn't think so. You get an F. I'll tell you what his source is. It's the book, The Great Alaskan Dinosaur Adventure. The authors made this claim, but never submitted their results for peer review, and never made this supposed find available for other scientists to examine. Further, the pictures they published appear to be fossilized bones, and no properly trained scientist has ever looked at these pictures and found the bones to appear unfossilized. To give you an idea of how lame these creationist scientists are, by their own admission, at one point they were fooled by a piece of driftwood thinking it to be a dinosaur bone. Carbon dating and all other forms of radiometric dating are so flawed that scientists don't even want to use them anymore to determine the age of fossils. Of course they don't, you moron, because radiometric dating doesn't tell you when the fossilization took place, but when the minerals in the fossil were formed. Radiometric dating is astoundingly accurate when you actually know what you're doing. 
For example, uranium lead dating has a margin of error of only 0.06%, even on rocks that are 3 billion years old. Also, these dating methods all agree with each other, as well as other methods such as dendrochronology. If they're so completely wrong, why do all of these very different methods get the same results? So how do they determine the age? They look at the layers of rock, place their own dates on these layers, and whatever layer the fossil falls on, voila, there's your age. Even though the oh, really? Then how do you explain the discovery of tectolic, one of the many transitional forms between fish and land vertebrates? The scientists who made the discovery knew ahead of time exactly where and how deep to dig for it. They didn't just dig around randomly until they found it, they knew which layer corresponded to the Devonian period and specifically went there to look for it. They do not work as the creationists claim. They only find the fossils where they're supposed to be, which is determined completely independently of the fossils found. Okay, here's a coincidence for you. Almost every religion in the world is based on works. Christianity is graced through faith, no works. Period. Which is probably why they feel no guilt about telling deliberate lies about evolution and the evidence for it. They feel their Savior will forgive them no matter what they do. They make Christianity out to be a very amoral religion indeed. But uh, you're going to die. 150,000 people do it every day. You could be one of them. You're going to bet on that cold shoulder of pride that you're not going to be judged? Ah, yes, Pascal's wager, or at least the illiterate halfwits version. Of course, they're betting on the Christian God, and not any of the plethora of other gods which this video itself says judges people on works. If they're wrong, they are so doomed. In fact, there may even be a special place in hell for the particular form of lying, egotistical, self-righteous scum that make up the creationists.